call to order uh, policy committee meeting, December 5th, knowing that all board members are here. Um, and with that, I'd like to approve all of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I don't have any public comments, and I don't think we've received any, so I think we'll get right from the policy to turn over to Randy. All right, awesome. We have a few more policies this time than our last meeting. I'm going to start off with 433. This is assignment to classes. Um, this policy is really utilized with an apparent request for, like, which, how, how are you going to assign students to classes? The only changes that we have to it are on the second page. Um, these are the ones highlighted in yellow, and this is just, I think, cleaning up a little bit of the language and making sure it aligns with really what our current practice is. So not a significant change. Um, PRG does not have a sample policy for this one, so we're staying with our own with just some modifications um, for our current language. Um, when the PRG does not have a suggested policy, then they have our team take a look at it to see if it's policy we feel we should keep. And if we do, then we review it um, with our own kind of lens to make sure it lines up with where we think we should be process-wise. So pretty straightforward. This is just really aligning it with current practice. The next policy, which you don't see listed here, is 443. This is with regards to um, student conduct. Um, I'm going to bring that back next time. Um, there's a couple things that are just it's the, the, the policy is fine. I mean, it's, it's the length, but I have some incongruencies between what I have in handbooks between high school and elementary. Um, elementary refers to the policy. Um, high school has more specifics, and I just have to rectify those two so I know how to write the policy piece. So um, I'll bring that one back next time, but it's a relatively straightforward policy. We just have to do some things internally before we can adapt it. Um, the next one is 443.1. Um, this is um, with regards to student dress. Um, the recommendation was to adopt the PRG policy. Um, this is one we had some additional conversations with Barry Forbes, who's our attorney with the uh, School Board Association, particularly as we started to get into like how specific you you get. What we landed on is because some of the dress pieces are a little bit more fluid and they're things that we often change on an annual basis within our handbooks. And since our handbooks come by policy, come back to all of you for adoption every year, um, we did add the yellow piece under this one that just says um, other student dress related to policy as written in the school board approved student parent handbook. So that way it's something that we have a little bit more fluidity to be able to change um, on an annual basis as we review that. Um, but I think otherwise we get into too many specifics. I think this policy-wise, we're really going to be kind of modifying it back and forth. So just a uh, question, uh, going back to the handbooks, uh, does that have, you know, like political language? Has, you know? It has what you're able to do, correct. There are some things in there like uh, um, specifically the high school has about like the Confederate flag and some of those things that were, um, but it has some of those more specific things too, right? Political pieces get a little bit more challenging because it all depends on how that speech is related to you know, the current standings and in in more case law. Um, so there are some things that still falls back under kind of uh, substantial disturbance and some other legal terms that are that are that are found there. I would say on an annual basis, we consult with our attorney on student speech issues um, a few times a year. That's many times it's related to dress. <clears throat> okay. Um, restrictions on tobacco, nicotine, and vapor products. Um, we are adopting the PRG piece here. There are few things that we added into here as we made some choices with regards to it. Um, let's see what my edits were here. Now, this is really just basically saying that we are, we have restrictions on tobacco, nicotine, vapor products. It also states that we're, we hold others accountable to that, including people who use our facilities. Again, this one's pretty straightforward with regards to 
the policy, it, it relates to not only the 400s, but the 500s and the 800 series as well. And just a question, but we don't, uh, we don't expel kids for smoking unless it involves um, drugs, right? Right. They don't go right. that far unless okay. No, I mean, a tobacco utilization, if you truly were smoking cigarettes, which I don't think I've seen in quite a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just uh, something that's dealt with through school consequences. Yeah. Um, the place where we get into the more significant behavioral pieces is when it's involving some sort of other controlled substance like THC. The next item, 443.4. This is really getting a little bit more specific into the student drug and alcohol use. The one thing we wanted to make sure that we had in there were lookalike substances on the first page. And then the second page wanting to also look at having in policy our ability to make some judgments based on working with trained individuals like our school liaison officer and field sobriety tests. Because um, there have been occasions where we've had a student who's who felt as an under the influence, but um, you don't have anything on their person, you don't have any evidence of that, but they have slurred speech, they're having trouble walking. So some of the field sobriety um, assessments that are done by law enforcement, um, being able to at least make some judgments based on that. Randy, uh, before you go on, uh, going back to uh, number one, what what does a look like? Um, that would be somebody example. like selling something that they most most commonly someone's trying to sell marijuana, but it's not marijuana. By pointing at TV, so it could be something like that. Um, can they I don't do see a, that a lot, but I have seen it in the past. Can they do a, a, a breathalyzer without? We can, yeah, on certain things, but a breathalyzer doesn't doesn't register everything. So then it gets a little bit more invasive. So that's part of why we do a lot need to have some other means for field sobriety pieces. So that might be something at school that could be utilized at different times throughout any other school activities. It's usually when in conjunction with our school liaison officer. Um, we also send some of our APs, our assistant principals, to some of the law enforcement training on, on sobriety type issues. Okay. It's things like watching your, your eyes, your pupils, your mm -hmm. mannerisms, your balance, all of those things. In our review of it, when we were talking about it, I was making, like the school has a lot more, in terms of probable cause, they have a lot more discretion than the say the law would have in Correct. trying to keep going. In. Yeah, when we get into things like, like search, it's like, uh, at school, I mean, our bar is a lot lower than, than law enforcement. We don't need a um, search warrant. We just need to have um, substantial suspicion. So if we have suspicion that there's something, we have the ability to to search it. And then there's things like lockers, et cetera. Um, that's kind of how it works when we run the dogs through the building or if they run through the parking lot, if you have your car parked, um, we, there's certain rights that go along with that. But our bar is lower than of what law enforcement is for a search. Often we uh, run those dogs. It's, um, it's usually once a year. It's usually kind of because it, it takes a lot of dogs to do it. And they usually kind of, the county will usually kind of put together like a team that will go from a different school or bring them. Right. And the dogs can only run kind of wears the dogs out. So it's kind of a piece that it's, uh, we're able to do it usually about on see what we can do. Four forty three point five care of student property. Um, there's only yeah, this one my team just wanted to add the word all. Um, I think it was just I Ted and I had this conversation, my sure it changed a lot of the meaning of it. Um, but it was important for a few of our team members to have the word all in there. And this is just with regard if you're damaging student property, that there's a, that you can be charged for that. Um, or otherwise, it's a similar, same policy as we've had. I think the only thing that I maybe thought of that it, it would include those that don't specifically maybe attend 
school like it would cover I didn't I didn't I'm yeah. still trying to straight it was kind of put through. in there just because I think sometimes we look at the kids who are doing student property are sometimes some of our higher needs kids and I think it's just meant to be that this is something we need to universally apply to everybody so I think that's where we're at all right 443.6 electronic communication devices. Um, the biggest piece that we have here, and it's just as, I know you've heard from our high school uh, that they've done a little bit different um, management of, of cell phones. So when you look on the second page, it says that basically electronic communication devices are allowed during passing times, lunch periods, excluding classrooms, restrooms, and locker rooms. You're not able to use the video recording pieces within a bathroom and locker room. That's actually um, in, in statutes. Um, but what we wrote in there is, except when they're specifically permitted by the instructor. That gives the latitude to the teacher as far as how and when you can utilize some of the other devices. I mean, I think that's in, in line with what we're now really working on with um, with student electronic devices at school. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that's come up is uh, cell phones in classrooms and making uh, you know, cell phone hotels, if you will. Right. Is that covered in here? Yeah, that's kind cell of where, phone that, that's where, it, it's where you put your cell phone at a, on a table or right. something and you throw them into the, oh, oh, into uh, the room. Yeah, you're just collecting them. So, yeah. you know, they're sitting on the table apparently and there's no use. Yeah, and that's really what that second page is really articulating. It says that they're not um, allowed in classrooms except specifically permitted for instruction. So it's, it, it allows for that hotel and it's up to the teacher that how they're going to allow that. <clears throat> so it gives you the out option to use it if you choose to. And sometimes you have, you have teachers who do different things that would where they would want their kid to have their phone. But sometimes they'll do electronic quizzes or other things. Many times they can do it now through their Chromebooks. But um, yeah, it allows that if, if it's if it's um, we 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 reviewed these with particularly with around exactly what you're talking about and some of the, the different rules that we've had at the at the high school. And I think this this complies with what we're trying to do. Would it be uh you know, if you can do things like electronic quizzes and things like that through the Chromebook, um, should we be more mandatory in this? I this still think you want to give the flexibility to the teacher to be able to do it. There's, I think there's different instruction. I don't want to limit a teacher's ability to have them be used if they, if they need to. The Chromebook can do certain things, but it can't do everything. I think that gives us kind of that they're basically restricted in the classroom unless they're allowed by the teacher. I think is where, where we should be. Uh, privacy in locker rooms. This is really gets back to one of the policies we just talked about. This is uh, this is one we, where we're adopting the, the PRG model. I believe what they're actually putting it in is this is actually in the 700s, um, but it just really talks about the no cell phone, no video recording different aspects that are uh, specifically required and, and, and mandated by us to follow. <clears throat> so those are all the statutes. So this is kind of just a repeating of statutes, but it talks about privacy and laundry. Okay, that's Weapons on school premises. This is one that the largest conversation we had was actually in the first bullet point in the middle of the first page following an exception of the policy pro prohibition. What we have left it there is that the instead of trying to get into a ton of different um, scenario pieces is that the prohibition does not apply where state law prohibits a school district from restricting any individual's right to possess a firearm or other weapon at a location covered by the policy. It's mainly law enforcement, those type of situations. Um, but as opposed to trying to articulate all those pieces down as we work with our attorney, we thought that was a better way. 
The other piece that we took out was we don't have a school forest. So we just took off the language that referenced that. Otherwise, I think it's uh, pretty straightforward with regards to weapons in the schools. And again, a lot of these pieces are articulated to different sections of statutes. So this would cover like an off-duty police officer. Yep. It has regulations around that, and they have laws that they have to follow around that as well. Okay. But just anybody who has a concealed carry is not allowed to bring it. No, you have to. You know, you, no, you, yeah, we have that posted on our schools too. So yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a series of policies here. I think there's four of them that are all with regards to gang related activity. The only changes we made to this was with regards to changing what was titled as an exhibit and moved it over to a rule. Theory Forbes recommendation was to keep our current policy, but to review it and change up a few of those items. As we reviewed it as an admin team, we really, as I was sharing with Ted in our initial review, we don't deal with a lot of if any really true gaming activity, but we felt it was important to keep the policies. So um, we were not making any changes other than some some piece some housekeeping pieces within the numeration of the policies. What's the difference between a rule and a exhibit? It, a rule is just kind of an extension of kind of more of like the administrative rules, how you're going to implement it. An exhibit is usually something that's like a sample letter or something like that. So a gang almost needs to be organized. It just can't be a crowd. Correct. That, uh, these are, this is kind of the whole youth gang type stuff. Um, we certainly had kids that have been gang numbers, but we haven't had really concerning gang activity. And this policy is really kind of directed more at that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a piece that we just felt we need to keep there, but it's not something we're necessarily dealing with um, frequently. <clears throat> 444 is the school aged parents and married students. Um, we just don't feel we need the policy any longer. Um, this is something that we we address when it comes when it comes forward, and it's really covered in other areas of our practice. I um, mean, needing to just meet the needs of kids as as they're really under other types of um, sections and rules. So we don't need a policy specifically on school age parents and married students. So we're recommending deletion of that policy. Four forty six. This is one that Ted was alluding to a few minutes ago, just with regards to searches. Um, this is for replacing our policy with our with with the uh, PRG four forty six. We have reviewed this with regards to our current practice, and this this lines up very much with the specifics of what's kind of articulated in in state statutes. Um, this does talk about. Like where we what we can search, where we can search those things, talks about the canine searches. Um, it keeps it quite broad. It does not go into overly specifics. And I think that that's <laughs> in the benefit of the novel. And it can allow us the latitude that the law provides us to, to do those when we need to. Most of our searches, I would say, are things that are bringing forward from somebody reporting something to us. Um, or a student being under the influence and suspicion of drugs. And then sometimes those pieces with regards to the K-9s. 4 the part where they, they don't have to disclose access information, is that referred to the phone, the locked phone? You can't ask a kid to open their phone. Um, you, that gets a little, yeah, you can. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging, but yes, there's there's certain things we, we can, we always can ask, and then there's parameters that we have of what we can do. I mean, things like the lockers, ours, the school, once you're parking with the permit on a prop premises, the, the vehicle pieces we can do. 
um, backpacks, empty your pockets, those type of things. And we don't go hands-on with kids and force them to do those things. So there's other measures that we'll often bring into, into effect if we need to. It's sometimes our liaison officer needs to get involved, particularly if it's other items. Um, and then that's where the investigation sometimes goes on hand in hand with school and law enforcement. But generally we have more ability to do things than, than law enforcement does just because of the nature of us as a school. And then there was actually a rule that was associated with that, that we had in our policy. And it went into a great deal of detail about searches. The recommendation was for us to actually um, repeal the rule and just stay with the 446 policy. And part of that was because the policy articulates what our rights are. And when you get into too, trying to too closely align what your procedures look like. If you don't necessarily follow those particularly, you can be, uh, that can cause problems for you in the process. So the recommendation is to repeal the procedures, but keep the policy, which allows us the broad latitude to do what we can by, by, by statute. Do you, can you cover, do you, have some type of professional development around this, uh, and or that's a big part of sure. Yeah, and that's a, a as from an administrative standpoint, this is actually a big piece that you, in part of our training, this is learning more about the searches and what we can and can't do. Um, there's also certainly practices that we have in place. You know, we don't you don't want anybody doing a a search of someone's backpack by themselves. So it's not just like me and you in a room closed door. There's always somebody else there. So they'll bring somebody in. So those get the protocols we have in place um, that are just kind of amongst us as far as making sure that we're doing this. So we have other eyes on the situation. Is the rule of detectives more? Uh, you know, the, 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 the rule of the yeah. training and, um, and everybody understands what the policy uh, of the, the rule rules. And how it's supposed to be done. That's kind of what I was when I was bringing it up. Is there, you know, you have more latitude to do searches, but um, if the liaison wants to be present, yeah. you know, you're getting into, um, yeah, you need like warrants and all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to, I mean, it kind of spells that out. Yeah. And without that, I don't know if we would get on any kind of problems. If you'd rather us continue to keep the procedures, we can then review those to make sure that those. I think there is an error written in here on the sentence that ends midway, but we can we can review that and make sure that that aligns. We can have some conversations as we take that to the board. It just seems like it would be, you know, more descriptive. The stuff we can do, and then, you know, you know, we've gone through some of those challenges and what and uh, if we follow this, what can we should be say that we be understanding. Fair enough. I that's my thought. Yeah. That's your thought, Doug. I don't have a problem with us going back and reviewing that. I just want to make sure that it's um aligns with what we haven't spent a lot of time with the procedures, so I'll go back with my team and review that. So I don't, have a, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I just think we have to be cautious that we don't make them too prescriptive, that they're that they're broad enough still, uh, but to have some of the broad procedures that we follow, and I, I can live with that. I'm good with it. I brought, I, I didn't relate, I related it back when we were talking about this, the same sort of thing, and then this really built into it. So I don't have any problem with it as well. Okay. Well, I find the time. Just make sure what are we doing? Look again. They want me to keep the rule, but I have to review the rule. Okay. Oh. Four four forty five point one rule, mm -hmm. which we were deleted. Yeah. Um, would like to keep it, but I need to review it with our team. Yeah. Okay.
And I believe the last one we have here today is students of legal age, which talks about kids who are turning 18. Um, I think the biggest thing we put in there was just as a provision that talks about students with disabilities. And that's a piece that we do provide information to parents about that ahead of time. That's a significant piece when you have a student with a disability because they're the ones that then the uh, right to turn over to them, and particularly when you're dealing with IEPs and all of those different pieces. And we have to work closely with parents to make sure that they get their, if they're seeking it, they're getting their guardianship pieces so we can continue to work with the parents on those outreach. That was our last one as an urban rest. I think we going with all recommendations other than that last one and keeping the rule. Yep. Um, so I think that was the only change we had was for us to, so I think if you wanted to, we could make a motion to approve all of them as presented with the exception of 445.1 rule of which you'd like administration to review and bring back to this or to the full board to not um, I'll try to right get here. it done before the full board. I'm not sure I will. I, I may end up bringing it here. Okay. And if that's the case, then I may just hold off on adopting the policy on Monday until I get the rule associated with it. So, so just exclude, uh, adapt everything except for right, right, except, right, right, except you want to have, right. 445.1 rule, our recommendation was to delete it and your recommendation was to keep it. So I think it's approve everything else to move forward with the exception of us bringing this back into the board. Make a motion to approve uh, all policies as presented except for 445.1 rule, uh, which will be brought back to uh, the committee for uh, regular review. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that, that is the end. We, do we have any future meetings up there? Do we need to have them down? I think we need to have it for the things that we really need to keep the foot on the table. When you, you guys wanted to try to set something in for a new year. Oh, when's our next? When are you and I going with my with our admin? Mm -hmm. Then I think we have a new year just as well. So we could we could potentially I don't know if we want to do it that first week in January, but we could really I'd like it to be at the January board meeting. Okay, so we could we could if we had a policy meeting like the second through the fourth. Well the third of January on a Wednesday. Give yeah. us a day to get our together. Does that I work for you? So far. Okay, let's do the third. Morning again. Yep. yep. Sounds good. 7.30 Wednesday. If that'll allow us to get it on the January board agenda. Yeah, and so then Ted, let's you and I look at that week of the 18th, like toward the end of the week. And we can we can email out your tax back and forth. Unless you have something that's popping it out. No, no worries. Okay. That's good. Perfect. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Andy. Good job. Thank you.